All right, so today I'd like to talk about the characteristic equation method. Um, this is, not surprisingly, a method for solving differential equations, um, ones that are in a very, very specific form. It's super constrained, right? So this only applies to differential equations that could be written in the form that's shown here. Um, basically, you have to have sums of derivatives of y, um, maybe zero derivatives up to some number and derivatives, um, multiplied by constants, um, set it equal to zero, right? That's the only kind of differential equation that this method applies to. So it's very specific, um, but there's there are a ton of really important differential equations of this form. So um, so it's it 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 comes up a lot. Um, so let me show how. So this is this is what it solves. Now let me show how it works. What you do. You guess y equals e to the lambda x. You guess a specific form for the solutions. Um, this might seem a little bit out of the blue, but it's it's kind of sensible. And if you think about it in this regard, um, what kind of function could you plug in on the left hand side, where you take those derivatives and everything cancels out to give you zero, right? There's, it doesn't give you a, little, a lot of options, really, um, right? But e, as you differentiate e, you still get e's back. So a lot of terms, you'll have a lot of combining like terms, and maybe everything can cancel and become zero. So that's what motivates that, I guess. So um, once you do that, after you plug in that guess, solve for lambda, right? This will be good old algebra, right? Polynomial factoring. or not necessarily <laughs> factoring, but root finding, right? So maybe quadratic formula if it's degree two. Um, right. So that's polynomial root finding. That'll find um, lambda for you. And then how do you build solutions based on these lambdas? Well, there's three cases. So I'm given a real lambda. Then you just keep this function. y equals e to the lambda x is a solution. Um, it's a little bit redundant to even say that maybe, uh, but now you, you know, you'll have the actual numerical value plugged in. Um, then <laughs> what's, what else can happen? Say you have a real root lambda of higher multiplicity, right? A repeated root. And let's say that M is the multiplicity, right? So M is, you know, maybe three, maybe it's a triple root, right? So then the solutions are still e to the lambda x, but you also then get x e to the lambda x, x squared e to the lambda x, all the way up to <coughs> x to the m minus one e to the lambda x. So it's kind of a maybe strange looking trick, right? You just you just start multiplying these solutions by x, and it generates more solutions that correspond to this higher multiplicity root. The last case, of course, is what about a complex root, <laughs> right? So if you have lambda equals a plus bi, and here's what you can do. Think of it like this. Think of it as plugging in a plus bi in for lambda, and then split this 
using properties of exponents. <coughs> Split it again using Euler's identity. And then distribute the E and you get two solutions. You get solution one and solution two. Notice here, um, you'll have a conjugate pair, right? You can actually ignore the other root, lambda equals a minus bi. Turns out you can do a similar trick. Um, some trig identities show that you don't get anything new. You just get the same solutions written in a slightly different form. So these are the three cases, real, repeated real, or complex, just like say partial fraction decomposition, right? When you were learning PFD back in Calc 2, um, same idea, right? You had to think about, okay, if there's um, distinct real roots, if there are repeated real roots, if there are complex roots, right? Those are really the, or irreducible quadratics, right? <laughs> they are kind of the different cases of PFD, same thing here, right? So now a question of course, maybe is, um, where are all these coming from? <laughs> so um, this comes from a sequence of letters back and forth between Euler and Bernoulli, um, where they they worked out these um, basically by very strategic guess and check. Um, so for us, what's cool is you know we just have the formulas and they work, right? The we can check that they work because you plug them in. It's easy to check that a solution is valid to a differential equation once you have the solution. It's very hard to come up with it. So Euler and Bernoulli came up with it. Well, and now for all of time, we have it. We can use it, right? Um, so that's the nice thing. You don't have to worry too much about where they came from. Um, they're valid and we know them. You can use them. So um, then the last step of this method is to apply what's called superposition, meaning if you have n different solutions, then the general solution is simply Every con every one of those solutions with a constant attached to it. Oops, I shrunk my screen. We'll all add it together. They call this linear combinations. All right, so that's um, that's the general solution. And there's a little asterisk here um, that. Technically, these need to be independent solutions. But we haven't defined that term yet. First, we're going to see just how to find the solutions. And then some ideas from linear algebra, specifically determinants, will let us figure out whether or not they're independent. So for the moment, we're going to kind of sweep that under the rug, um, but we'll we'll backfill that when we do linear. So. All right. So, of course, what's next? Example. Let's take an example.
let's solve this differential equation using the characteristic equation. So here, notice this is the correct form, right? Um, you can think of it as this, right, which is exactly matches this form up here, right, the form up here in our um, definition. So what's the first step? Plug in. E to the lambda x. Well, think about what happens when you differentiate e to the lambda x. Well, it stays e to the lambda x, but it multiplies by lambda, by chain, right? And if you differentiate twice, lambda squared, three times, lambda cubed, and so on. But now, every term has an e. I'll just divide that off. Right. Oops. right, if you divide both sides by e, um, e to anything is never zero, so you can always divide that, right? This right here, after you divide by the E, right? This is what the method is named after. So this is the characteristic equation. Right. So that's, um, one thing you can notice is basically the y's turn into lambdas and the primes turn into powers. So in practice, um, people usually skip straight from here to here. Because the middle work, it's always the same, right? So it's a very efficient process. You can, in practice, here I showed all the middle steps, but in practice, people skip right to the characteristic equation. Factor. All right, well. It shows me lambda equals zero is a root. And then here, I'm going to do quadratic formula because I don't see a way to factor that. B squared minus four AC. Yeah, there we go. A, B, C, negative, negative B plus or minus square root. B squared minus four AC over two A, yeah. All right, so what do I get here? I have one plus or minus the square root of minus three over two. So 
So these are complex, right? And remember, use just one. Say just the pot, the plus. And then we can look solution one, solution two, right? How do we build that from A and B? Well, here A is one half, B is root three over two. All right, so those are the solutions corresponding to the complex roots. Also, I have this real root zero. What solution does that give me? Well, it's u the zero x, which is just one, right? Just constant. Okay, now superposition. We have three solutions. So I C1 times the solution corresponding to my real root, C2 times the solution, the two, well, the, the cosine of my complex solution, C3 with the sine. We solve the differential equation, right? And once again, if this looks like a bit rabbits out of hats, um, you know, where is this e times cosine coming from? Well, Euler and Bernoulli figured out that it worked. Um, you know, if you're skeptical, just plug it into the differential equation, and you'll see that it, it checks out. So, all right. So there's our first example. Right? We got our general solution to that third order constant coefficient linear homogeneous differential equation. Next, let's do another. Let's do a fourth order D. Let's do this fourth order equation. Okay, so like I mentioned before, just go straight to the characteristic equation. You could plug in, you could show the algebra of plugging in e to the lambda x, but you don't have to, right? You could just, just go straight there. So this would be lambda to the fourth plus four lambda cubed plus six lambda squared plus four lambda plus uh, one, right. And you might say, wait, but I thought y's turned into lambdas. They do, but the power is how many derivatives, right? So this, you could think of as lambda to the zero because this is the zeroth derivative of your function y. Right. Okay. Now, this factors beautifully because in general, it's extremely hard to factor a degree four polynomial but not if you recognize the coefficients from Pascal's triangle. Right, so this is just a single root of multiplicity four. So our solutions, E 
to the minus x, x e to the minus x, x squared e to the minus x, x cubed e to the minus x. Right, those are the four solutions. And then general solution. Superposition. And we're done. So there we go. Now we've seen all the cases, right? We've seen how would you solve a differential equations form involving um, lone real roots, right? Distinct real roots, complex roots, and repeated roots. Right? So <coughs> All right, thank you so much. Uh, next time we will talk about what if the right-hand side is not zero, non-homogeneous.